All right, folks, welcome to uh, Perry, Georgia. We're at the Guardian Centers. We're here to do another Chemical of the Month. My name's Kurt. I'm Todd. Welcome. So we're gonna get out our charts, get out our NIOSH, or our references to uh, look this stuff up, and we're gonna run a play. All right, Todd, I got a question for us. Yes. You retired as a lieutenant out of Jacksonville Fire. I did, I did. And I retired out of Michigan, yeah. the fire department there. What do they call that? Uh, you, you guys drink pop or you guys drink soda? Well, <laughs> well in the South, it's called Coke. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Everything's a Coke, whether it's orange or purple or but All right. soft drinks. What kind, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, all right, so up where I come from, we call it pop. All right, and uh, that's okay. That, you can call it whatever you want, <laughs> yeah. but you're wrong. Well, that kind of brings up a couple <laughs> things. And uh, if you think about it, you know, if you look at it, nowadays we're, we're drinking a lot more pop. Uh, Americans are consuming a lot more pop or soda, however you want to call it. Uh, I remember back in the old days, you know, you'd go to high school or something, you'd go buy a, buy a drink and it was 20 ounces and that was a large. Nowadays, you come out with a five gallon bucket and a straw and it's 99 cents and that's, that's their large. So uh, because of that, the uh, carbon dioxide cylinders that they're using uh, to, for the fountain drinks are getting quite a bit larger. Right. They used to be a you know, small cylinder, maybe you know, a foot in diameter, a couple feet tall. And now those things are getting up to 450 gallons worth or 250 to 450 right, gallons. So they work at press gas, some are, some are now yeah. the uh, cryogenic. Absolutely, yeah. getting into cryogenic, yeah. 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 So. Uh, that's been been going on across the country where folks are responding to that a little bit more. Right. And uh, I think that'll be a good call to run. So I think today we're gonna run carbon dioxide. We're gonna okay. look at that and uh, and talk a little bit about it because it's got some issues. So sure. let's yeah. take a look at it. Absolutely. So get out your charts, get out your books. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look up carbon dioxide. So if you look over here, you flip over the charts. I'm gonna go to chart two, I like that chart the best. And I'll look down and I don't see carbon dioxide here. So it tells me that that's an above the line. Right. Okay, if it's an above the line, it tells me it's a gas, which tells me I'm, my initial isolation distance is 300 feet. Tells me that uh, there's a vapor pressure and they're heavier than air. It is toxic, parts per million. Uh, I'll be able to uh, get a flammability or potentially get a flammability reading. Tells me corrosive and typically they pH red. Uh, also yes in fluorine and then uh, reactive. Could be water and air reactive and it may polymerize as well. And of course radioactivity. So that's my uh, 10 second size up right. to look at this chemical. Right, right. So as I go into chart three, I start at the, like a book, top left corner, work my th way through and I look for any part of carbon dioxide in that, that uh, flammable char syllable box. And I look and I do not see carbon dioxide. So I come over to the middle. I don't see it here as well in the uh, first name corrosive gas clue. That kicks me over and it tells me I'm gonna run a red one. So this is an unknown call at this point mm -hmm. uh, as I run it through my system, which so, is it's just good. to stop you for a second. I, I see like carbonyl, is that the same thing as carbon? Hey, spelling and names count, right? right they gotta right, be yeah. exact, so right. it does not count. Right. You gotta right. have it exact, yep, yeah, good point. Go. Yep. So as I run this play, it's a red one, which is good. Yep. It's an unknown. It tells me take all my meters and right. use all of those things. And now we gotta use our meters as indicators to tell us whether this stuff's present and how, right. how much is. So we're predicting all hazards. Yeah, so I'm predicting all hazards. That red one tells me it's an unknown, no match, not sure. All hazards tells me to take all those and it tells me PPE for recon and rescue, turnout, B or an A. And then it also tells me for plumbing identification, turn out right. B and A. So now it tells me to go to step two. Right, so use a reference. We're here in the book. And it's on page uh, 53, carbon dioxide, top chemical there. And uh, I, I believe in our assessment, we said this is going to be a gas, right? That's what we said. Yeah, so, and the physical description says colorless, odorless gas. Okay, so that tells me my initial hot zone is 300 feet. Yeah. Uh, it tells me vapor pressure. What do I want to know? What's the vapor pressure there? Its vapor pressure is 56.5 atmospheres. Okay. Yeah, but I wanna, uh, just, just something I picked up here. It says shipped as a liquefied compressed gas. Okay. So it could be in a liquefied state under, under pressure. Sure. And solid form is utilized as dry ice. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Just, so I think we can talk about that. Yeah, so yeah we'll if, look at that for sure. Okay, um, so we're looking at the, uh, as we look at this, we said it's gas. Are those vapors heavier than air? So the molecular weight is 44, and it even gives us an R gas D, relative gas density, or vapor density, in, uh, in our terms, of 1.5. Okay, so yes, it's heavier. all right. So is this stuff toxic? Well, so everything's toxic, right? <laughs> so good yeah. point. Yeah, so IDLH lists in parts per million, but it's 40,000 ppm's. Okay. 
um, which is quite high. That's really so, high. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. And then uh, what about flammability? Is this stuff flammable? There is no LEL, no UEL, no flashpoint. Okay. No non flash flammable point? gas. That's a, okay. That's a defined gas. Corrosivity is a corrosive gas. So the gas guide here, the ERG guide number is 120. Okay. So it's not one of the corrosive gases? No. Okay. Nope. All right. Uh, what about fluorine? Is there fluorine in this? Uh, there is no F in the formula. Okay. So we go to the formula box, right. look for the capital yeah. F. Hey, okay. Just as an interesting note, um, under synonyms and trade names, as you look at the DOT box, it says carbonic acid gas. So it's not listed as an acid gas. Okay. Or corrosive gas. Right. But it has this name. So sometimes the names can be a little misleading, can't sure. they? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. this is where our meters would indicate to us the actual true hazard or not. For sure. Okay, will this stuff polymerize? Is it reactive? Um, so there's no, there's no carbon to hydrogen double bond, and no carbon to carbon double bond, excuse me. Okay. There is no letter P next to the guide number. In incompatibilities, it says here, there's no polymerization mentioned in here at all. Okay. All right, so no polymerization, that's a good thing for us. The day's getting better. Is it radioactive? We did that? Well, we, we, do, no? we do have some reactivities, uh, and I wanted okay. to list. So it says, hey, dusts of various metals, such as magnesium and titanium and aluminum, uh, are ignitable and explosive when suspended in carbon dioxide. So don't go suspending these things in carbon dioxide. <laughs> okay. Right? And it forms carbonic acid and water. Okay. So. All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Is this explosive? In other words, what is, is it no. labeled under it, DOT's it, it guidelines? Guide, no. The guide so number for those explosive. are 112, 113, 114. This is guide 120. Okay. So when I run this, I'm going to take all my meters because my red one plate tells me so, right? What, yeah. what kind of predictions, just based off the, the size that we just did, what yeah. kind of predictions or so, meter readings am I going to get? So we know we're dealing with a gas, and there is no LEL, no UEL. The ionizing potential is greater than 10.6, so our PID instrument, our VOC sensor, right. is not going to see this stuff. It's not listed as a corrosive gas, but this name, carbonic acid gas, kind of throws me a little curveball. Okay. But I'm not going to get freaked out on it. We're just going to, hey, if the paper responds red, well, right. it says it's an acid gas. If it doesn't respond, I wasn't expecting it because of the DOT guide number anyway. Okay. With all the other sensors, we know this about carbon dioxide, mainly because of our uh, working in the fire service. Sure. We know that this is an oxygen displacing gas. That's how it's used to extinguish fire, small, right. you know, small incipient stage fires. So we know that it has some uh, oxygen displacing properties. Okay. So we could probably look at the oxygen sensor um, and, and help us kind of guide us yeah. into any potential hazards. In fact, if you think about it, I watched the video online about Phoenix Fire did a great case study on that. Right, uh, right. And they had a, a gal who had passed out in a uh, restaurant. Right. As a result, they had one of those large cylinders leaking right, right. and uh, was leaking inside of a building. It was alarmed, but unfortunately, nobody heard the alarms for whatever reason. And uh, they found her unresponsive. Right. Uh, and when they went in, the firefighters had no clue. They're th you know, you find a person down, you're thinking, either you know, uh, cardiac yeah, issues. They went on a medical maybe, call. Yeah, they, yeah, 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 carbon monoxide or something yeah. else. You're not thinking carbon dioxide. Right. And uh, I think what's important to, to know is the way they were able to get their readings was through low oxygen levels. Right. They saw their oxygen meters going down, and the results were going down 10, 12 right. percent or something to that nature. Yeah. So. Um, you and know, and you they had some uh, some weird other meter meter readings too. Sure. So they had a lot of a lot of work to, to figure out. But and again, they were able to tie it into the uh, to the um, the cryogenic doer labeled exactly. as carbon dioxide. And yeah, the other the issue um, we've heard a couple times too is some other cases that folks will tell us about the uh, the, the readings that they're getting, and uh, we found that places with large power outages, and if they they have a cold food storage facility or whatnot. They'll go out and buy that dry ice. They'll buy the blocks right, of dry right, ice. Right. And we've heard of similar situations of that happening as well, sure. where the yeah. low oxygen level workers go in, don't know. If I was to ask you right now, yeah. how much oxygen in the environment, everybody says 21%, right. and we're guessing we really don't know unless we take those meters. Right. So Todd, tell me, you know, if, if my oxygen drops, 
percentage wise can, you got some calculations that'll help us with that yeah yeah so you know uh, and that's one of the confusing things that we, and we do these air monitoring classes and highly encourage you to take other air monitoring courses too but you know j just a, a, on a, a way to determine the presence of something other than a spe specific chemical in the air that our meters are designed sure. to see things that displace oxygen um, if you displace oxygen by one full percent from 20.9 to 19.9, it takes about a 5% displacing gas to do that. Okay. Now, so, and that would, that 5% displacing gas would equate to 50,000 parts per million. And if you know it's carbon dioxide and your oxygen goes from 20.9 to 19.9, you can safely guesstimate that it's a 50,000 ppm drop. Now that 1% drop would be 10,000 ppm greater than the IDLH atmosphere. Okay. And keep this in mind, the oxygen sensors on our ray meters and our, all of our uh, instruments do not alarm until they go to 19.5%. So that 1% drop may not even be picked up unless right. you are acutely aware sure. of your monitoring practices. So even at half of that, 25,000 parts per million in the air, you're only going to see a yeah. half a percent drop on right, the meter, right. no alarms. Right. So you're not going to know unless you're paying attention to the 19 point, or, uh, you know, you're going to see the drop go down exactly. a half a percentage, right. and that's going to, okay. At a 20.4, it could be 24.4%. You know, that could be 25,000 people. You're exactly right. right. Yeah. right. Which is significant, you know. It may not cause you know, death, obviously, but you could certainly have some effects from it. For sure. And uh, so for us, we were running that red one. We should be wearing SCBA PPE, yeah. right. which is firefighter right. gear. Right. If we don't have firefighter gear, uh, level B or level A would be would be Absolutely. acceptable yeah. here as well, yeah. both rescue and recon right. Right. for this particular. Camp. Heck, even in this case, I mean, if you know it's carbon dioxide and you, you're on a medical call. I mean, right. We're, we're, nine times out of ten, this is not coming in as a hazardous materials response or even a fire response. This is coming in as a person down, right. you know, a sick person in a building or, yeah. or it could be anywhere. Right. Yeah, you know, sure. These things are everywhere, even in microbreweries now and in you know, the restaurants and what have you. So you this isn't going to come in kind of triggering those alarms. You may have to run out and just grab your SCBA and just wear your normal uh, uniform, right? Because right. there's no other hazards present, but you got to bring your meters to make sure that th that's not present. All right. Good, good. So you mentioned microbrews. Yeah. You're, you're you're talking to me here. Right, so right. I think I it's a, language. I think it's a good point. Is I think you guys. Yeah, we, we're, yeah. we're speaking on the same. Yes, terms. yes, we're now That's speaking right. the same language. Right, we like we that, came right. together. Right, so right. Yeah. yeah, all good. Um, and I think we, you know, you covered some good information today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, remember, use your charts, use your books, and use your meters. You want to be that hazmat rock star. Right. Learn how to use your meters and understand them, and, and be able to know those readings. So, keep um, in mind that this 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 hazmat IQ above the line, below the line, is all it's meter driven. It's absolutely meter driven. So we highly encourage you to uh, to continue to practice with the charts and get into other air monitoring programs. We offer all types of courses involving uh, air monitoring. For sure. And uh, we we'd love to come out and and see you in person. Use your safe kits, use your meters. We appreciate it. Yep. Uh, signing with off. That, I'm signing off. Kurt, Todd out. See you next See time. You.